A lot of people who speak to entrepreneurs and especially spiritual entrepreneurs will say, move through your triggers and your trauma and charge what you're worth and let me teach you how to do that. I don't, I, I, so totally valid. And every person, every human should be, ought to be, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, moving through their traumas and their triggers and learning them so that they can heal and understand what they reveal. Everyone ought to be learning that they are worthy and integrating and accepting their worthiness so that they know to charge what they're worth and ask for what they're worth in 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 their in their work everyone that's that's a message for everybody not just for you know um spiritpreneurs but i'm speaking to our spiritpreneurs right now because this is something that's been, um, you know, that we've kind of been targeted for. And I'll tell you another thing that um, everybody ought to do, um, but especially servant leaders, especially, um, you know, people who are learning to trust and put their faith in spirit in the universe, in, you know, excuse me, in um, essentially following through on like the manifestations and following through on um, the messages that you get, okay? Everybody ought to be, and here's the key, everybody ought to be learning to trust their intuition <sighs> but are they though because you will move through your traumas and your triggers not only if you are doing that work but also more easily and with uh, uh, like a higher rate of of acceptance and you know, um, success essentially, like, you know, higher rate of success, uh, you know, 80, 80%, 85% success rate at, um, you know, at moving through your traumas when you are, uh, deciding how to serve and how to be, um, how to be out there with your work and your magic if you are listening to your intuition and if you are, um, trusting your intuition hair flip and you will charge your worth so easily and and not have to like come up with it this is what i've learned is that when i when i realized that i needed to quit my corporate job for realsies oh i thought that was a uh, frog cuz it did a little jump but i think it's like a a cricket or something like that um when I knew that I was, it was time, time to leave my corporate job, um, which I just put in my notice yesterday, yay! So, almost out. Um, I, I realized that it was, it was because I was, I was finally ready to serve spirit from a space of like not asking other people what they need, but asking what spirit needs of me and I thought I was doing that before but then I would go into like perfectionist productivity mode and I would start creating lists like I would start um, just sitting there and trying to analyze hello is that spirit um, you know that that brain that hardwired brain capacity to sit and plan I don't think so. I think that's the shit that we learned in school that trained us to second guess ourselves, our intuition, so we wouldn't leave our corporate jobs. Mm. 
training us to go and be corporate drones. They really did that, didn't they? Um, I would I would sit down and I would start planning and, and say, okay, if this thing is going to be X number of weeks, then I think somebody would pay this for X number of weeks of learning. And how can I justify that? Well, um, I'm going to be working X number of hours per day up until then. And then uh, if I charge X number of dollars for every, for this thing and that thing and this thing and that thing, whoa, this is a big spider web here. It's like spitting across two whole trees that are so far away. Wow, you really did that. You really did that thing. Um, I would I would analyze, you know, and, and try and justify and explain. Explaining yourself is, is such a mental, non-intuitive energy. It's a very non-intuitive habit to have. Sip. But when I tuned in to, finally, serving spirit and learning what, what I need to do to be of service to spirit, I, I really started to trust my intuition. I started to hear it more clearly. I started to put my faith in what I was hearing. And I just created a three-week course and I said, how much am I going to charge for it? And suddenly a number popped into my head. And instead of saying, ooh, nobody's going to pay $600 for a three-week course. Nobody's going to unless I add this, this, and that. Unless I, I, mm, I really just start. I, I heard it, okay? I'm not going to lie. I heard all of that come up. And then I stopped myself because my intuition rang true. And when I heard it speak again, it was, it was saying, this is what you're worth. This is what you're worth. And there will be people who will know how, there will be people who know, is that what I said? Who know how powerful this is and they will be willing, not only willing, but excited to pay that number of dollars to connect with you and receive your service. And I was like, okay. And I went and, and on all of the pay buttons on, on the sales page that I created for it, um, I just went and typed it in a whole bunch of times. And I didn't even do kind of like the, the duplicate and repeat thing where it just automatically you know fills in everything for you I was like I'm gonna go and type it in freshly every time just to remind myself that this is what I'm worth so do the trauma work do the self-worth work and do the intuitive work but know that if you are trusting your intuition and your triggers you know you, you've you've been able to clear some of those triggers so that um, when you do hear your intuition you're not second-guessing it and you know what you're worth so when you hear your intuition you're not saying yeah but what's more valuable jumping free free diving into chaos or having a plan <clears throat> Which is what, um, you know, trusting your intuition is, is like the majority of the time. Um, if you are caring for those two things because you know that they support the listening to of your intuition, then, if then, you won't have to uh, think about what am I worth? And then start charging from uh, an analytical space. You won't think of, okay, how might some of my traumas or what might, what might trigger me as I'm, as I'm proceeding with this particular thing? 
you won't do that. You will tune into your intuition and your intuition will tell you, hey, this is going to be hard and easy. This is going to be fun and challenging. This is going to be exactly what you need at exactly this time. And you will say, okay, I hear you. I trust you. I love you. I love you. And I'm ready. So what do I need to do next? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, what do I need to heal right now so that I can really be prepared for this? That's my preparation. That's my, you know, if, if planning is preparation, then what can I heal right now? That is preparation. What am I gonna charge? Okay, heard, done. Which days uh, should I create, should I schedule this retreat? Or should I, um, you know, create this course? Or uh, which days should I hold this workshop? Okay, heard. No second guessing, no room for doubt, just pure trust, pure faith. As a spiritpreneur, I feel like it's really important to share this message and also to reiterate it as much as I possibly can. And as I was saying that, I looked at the time on the video and it was 11.44 because your intuition as a spiritpreneur is going to be your manager, essentially. I've found that it's really difficult to be, no zitch, um, it's really difficult to be a creator, a creative type, someone who creates content, someone who creates a whole other world within this world that is reflective of the world that you imagine. And also, to be a manager, to manage yourself. I've found that to be very difficult and I've asked myself time and time again how to be my own manager or whether I would need to find a manager, somebody to manage me. <laughs> I have imagined a lot of different ways to um, kind of fill up that space and what I realized is 